How's it going guys? In today's video we're going to be going over how we can create this sliding intro screen and this is very common in a lot of apps today that they have some sort of welcome that you can click on next and it will slide to another screen. It's going to tell you more about the app and then it takes you to the final screen where you can finish doing whatever you want to do. And in this tutorial here, I just made sure that the final button took us back to the beginning so that we can test this over and over. But of course, the final button you have here should take you to some sort of login or to the home page or something else. So we're going to be going over how we can make this and you can also drag and swipe if you want. This button down here is just for convenience purposes. Now, the very first thing I recommend you do is go to your assets catalog and import three photos of your choice. And I already have mine prepared. One's called co-work, one's called website, and one's called work. Then go ahead and select them and drag them inside your project. Now we're going to freely be able to use these images for our intro screen. And the next thing we have to do is go ahead and create a page model. So go ahead and click on Swift file, next, and call it page model. And the page model is going to just model the page for us. So it's going to contain a title, a description, a image URL, and so on. So first let's go ahead and get started with struct page, which is going to be identifiable. And we also want to go ahead and let the ID equal a UUID. Then we want to give it a title, which I'll just call name of type string, a var description of type string, and then a image URL, which will be of type string. And finally, a tag, which is going to be of type int. And the tag is just going to be used to keep track of the page we're currently on. Now, I highly recommend you create some sample data every time you create a model. It just makes previewing so much easier. So here we're going to go ahead and create a static var sample page, which is going to equal a page and we're going to fill out the information by hand. So title, example, for example, and this is a sample description for the purpose of debugging. The image URL is going to be set to work, which is one of the images I added to my assets catalog, and the tag is going to be set to zero. Now we're also going to hard code in all the pages we want to appear in our application. So here we're going to go ahead and type in static var sample pages. And this is going to be of type array of page. And it's going to equal an array of pages. And in general, you would probably want to loop over this so you can fill this out, but we're going to create them all by hand. And we only have three pages for this. So first let's go ahead and get started with the first page. And the first page is going to say, welcome to default app exclamation mark and the description will be set to the best app to get stuff done in an app the image url is going to be set to co-work which again if we go to the assets catalog you'll notice that i named an image that's named co-work so make sure it matches the name exactly and the tag is going to be set to zero this is the first image so we're going to have to leave it at the index of zero. And Xcode is not happy because I called it static car instead of static var. So go ahead and fix that if for some reason you copied that and the errors are going to go away. Now we need to create two more of these, but since I just showed you how we made the first one, I'm going to go ahead and copy in the other two that I created. So here I'll just paste this in. And for the second page, it says meet new people. It has another description and it has a different image URL, which says work. And remember to increment each tag by one. And then the final page has a tag of two and an image URL of website. So these are going to be my sample pages and we can format this and there we go. But now that we have the model data and the sample data that we want to use in our application, we can go ahead and create a new view. And this is going to be a Swift UI view, which is going to be called page view. And inside our page view, we want to go ahead and take one parameter. And this is going to be a page of type page. And we went ahead and created a static variable. So inside here, we can say the page is equal to the sample page. And this is where it's very great that we did that because now we can actually see it in the preview window with the sample data and we can style it accordingly. So inside here, the first thing we want to do is go ahead and create a V stack 
with a spacing of 20, followed by an image. And inside here, we're going to insert the page.image URL. Then we want this to be resizable, scaled to fit, so it fits in the screen. And we're going to give that some padding, followed by a corner radius of 30, a background of dot gray, dot opacity of 0 0.10, which is just 10%, a corner radius of 10, and some more padding. So we're going to get this very nice frame effect. Then right below that, we're going to go ahead and type in text, and we need to insert the page.name with a dot font of dot title. And the text below that is going to be page.description with the dot font of dot subheadline and a frame with the width of 300 while we delete the rest of it. So in the end, we're going to end up with this very simple page view and it looks really good. It's very simple. And as you can see, it didn't require much work, especially since we have this sample page over here, we can preview everything and we can style it in the way that we want to. Now let's go ahead and finish this off by going inside our content view and resuming the preview. Now there are a few things we have to start with and one is the at state private var page index, which will keep track of which page we're currently on. Then we have to go ahead and type in private let pages of type page equal page dot sample pages. And of course you could have just inserted all those sample pages in here. I just thought it looked a lot nicer if we kept it in the model so that we have a clean content view. And then we need to go ahead and type in private let dot appearance equal UI page control dot appearance. And we're going to be using that to customize the small dots at the bottom because on a tab view, by default, the dots on the bottom are going to be white and we can't see those if we are in light mode. So we need to be able to modify them so they can appear dark. Now at the bottom of body, we're going to create two functions. One's called increment page and it's just going to take the page index plus equal one. So it's going to increment it like that. And we also should go ahead and type in function go to zero. And here we're going to set the page index to zero. Now inside the body, we can go ahead and create a tab view. And it's going to be bound to the selection of page index. And we need to go ahead and create a for each loop, which is going to take each page in pages. And it's going to return a page in the V stack and whatever content we decide to provide inside here. First, we're going to start with a spacer and another spacer so we can center some content. And inside here, we'll add the page view we created with the page of the current page. And this V stack is going to have a tag of page.tag. But we also have to write some logic in here, such as if the page is equal to pages.last, so if this is the last page in the array, then we want to provide a button. And the button is going to say sign up with the action, which is going to be whatever action you want. Preferably, it's going to take the user to a sign up page or to a login page. And in this example, we're just going to say go to zero so we can debug easier. And it's just going to take us to the beginning of our array. And it's going to have a button style of dot bordered. And here we have an error because page does not conform to equatable. And that's actually quite simple to fix. I just absolutely forgot to go here and say that this should also conform to the equatable protocol. Then we can go back to content view and the error will just magically disappear. But let's say that the page is not the last page. Then we need to go ahead and also specify the function of the button that says next. And the action is going to be set to increment page. So we're going to get this next button over here. And right now, if we run the application, nothing's going to happen. I mean, actually, if we click on next, it's going to change the page, but there's not going to be a smooth animation and we can't slide anything. Now let's just go ahead and improve this app so that the users have a very smooth user experience. So right under tag and about two curly brackets down on the tab view curly bracket, we want to go ahead and type in dot animation 
dot is in is out, and we want to follow the value of page index. So that's going to create an automatic slide. Then we want to go ahead and type in tab view style. And this is the magic of SwiftUI. And we can just say dot page. Now, just like that, we can go ahead and swipe our views left and right, and it's going to work perfectly. And you might also run into this error that says your app has closed unexpectedly, but you can go ahead and ignore it. It's something annoying with Xcode. It doesn't affect your app in any way. It's kind of like a false alert and it's incredibly annoying, but you can just safely ignore that and continue with the program. And right below the tab view style, we can go ahead and type in index view style. And we want this to be dot page with the background display mode of interactive, which means we're going to have some dots under next and those dots are going to be interactive, which means if you press on one of them, it's going to move to that current dot. And I forgot under the button to place another spacer. And the very last step is to go ahead and style the dot appearance. So on here, we need to go ahead and call on appear and call dot appearance dot current page indicator tint color and set that to dot black. So as you can see in the preview window, we now have this black dot over there, but it doesn't tell us much because we can't see how many dots there are. So go ahead and call dot appearance dot page indicator tint color and set it to dot gray. Then you're going to see the total amount of pages and you're going to be able to run this application with no problem. So now go ahead and hold command plus R and wait for your application to build. So as soon as the application builds, you can go ahead and play around with your app and let's go ahead and click on next and it's going to slide to our next screen. We can click on next again and it will take us to our final screen. So it's a very smooth user intro sliding screen. And at the end of this, they're going to know that there's only one option and that's to sign up. And they can also choose to go backwards if they want in case they want to read something again. And they can also interact with these dots at the bottom. So there's actually a lot to be done and it has very smooth animations. So it's just wonderful. Your users are going to be happy and they're going to know how your app works. But that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.